the Minamata Convention on Mercury has marked a clear step forward in the protection of human health and the environment. The GEF has played a very important role during the whole uh, process of negotiations with different projects all, all around the world, identifying the needs of developing countries in order to get prepared for uh, the actions, the global actions that we need in the Mercury field. Mercury is a highly toxic substance of global concern and has been responsible for Minamata disease. The GEF has been designated as a major component of the financial mechanism of the Convention and is charged with funding the implementation of the Convention in developing countries and countries with economies in transition. I'm in Peru for a conference and take the opportunity to visit one of our GEF projects which seeks to eliminate the use of mercury in artisanal and small-scale gold mining in Peru and Ecuador. The project is implemented by UNIDO. I head to Suyo in northern Peru with Jose Antonio Mendez and Paul Cordy to look at two examples of gold mining and processing. We have a long two hour drive through some rough terrain to meet up with the gold miners from the region. They explain the different types of ore that comes out of the mines. The red ore contains oxide minerals and is processed on site to extract the gold. The grey ore contains sulphides and this can only be concentrated on site and shipped for further processing. The miners show us the mine shafts which are pretty daunting but since I'm already here I decide to go down the rabbit hole myself to experience what the working conditions are and I find it's not very fun. And so? Fun. Fun in mines. It is not fun. <laughs> For extracting gold with mercury, the rock is first ground in these large mortar and pestle devices. Here, a young boy is extracting gold from the tailings of a previous extraction. In this vessel, there is approximately 500 grams of mercury and likely only 1.5 grams of gold. This is indicative of the misuse of mercury and highlights the problem that must be addressed. The sediments are then panned to separate the heavier mercury and gold from the rest of the material. The mixture is then squeezed through cheesecloth to remove the excess mercury, leaving behind a gold and mercury amalgam. And it's just going to squeeze it like cheese. You can see that the miner is directly being exposed to toxic mercury. The amalgam is heated to remove mercury, leaving behind the gold. In the second site, we see the alternative practice where mercury has been replaced by cyanide extraction. To start the process, the ore is crushed using a ball mill. The milled ore 
is then mixed with sodium cyanide and water in a cement mixer and placed into percolation ponds. The gold cyanide solution is leached out and is piped into barrels. Residual cyanide goes in these tanks. It's a barren solution. And that cyanide, they just recycle it back into the, uh, into the, the uh, percolation pond. The gold cyanide solution is then mixed with zinc shavings. The gold precipitates on the zinc, leaving the cyanide solution barren and ready for recycling. The gold zinc complex is heated to evaporate the zinc, leaving behind gold. While cyanide is an acute toxin, once the process is carefully monitored and controlled, in this case, keeping the solution at a pH above 11, the method poses little threat to humans. Residual cyanide in the tailings is destroyed by exposure to sunlight or can be actively destroyed before discharge by mixing in an oxidizing agent such as hydrogen peroxide or oxyclean laundry detergent. This protects the environment. In speaking with the community, it is clear to me that future investments can assist in completely eliminating the use of mercury in the region to both improve the environment and the health and prosperity of the mining communities in Suyo. As we head towards implementation of the Minamata Convention, the results of projects like this one will help us understand how we can shape future assistance.